Welcome to the Whale Scout Podcast, everyone. My name is Whitney Negebauer, and today we are joined by Amy Carey. She is the Executive Director of Sound Action, a shoreline development watchdog group here in Puget Sound. And today we're going to be discussing a new exciting project that you all just unveiled, an underwater orca camera. Um, and it's slated to be launched at Point Robinson on Maury Island and South Sound, where our endangered southern residents are known to pass by very close to shore. Um, Amy Carey, welcome. It's so glad Hi. to talk to you and see you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. So I, I know you personally, but for those out there who do not know you, could you share a little bit about your personal story and how you got involved with orcas? Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, I grew up in the Midwest, so about as far away from any marine waters. You know, I didn't see the ocean until I was 18. Um, But, you know, for reasons I can't even really begin to describe, I always had this strong affinity to orcas. I I call them often my gateway uh, animal into uh, (laughs) environmental work. And so I had moved out to um, the Pacific Northwest and, you know, can uh, just remember the first time I saw the Southern residents and it was on Vashon Island where I'm fortunate enough to have landed. And um, Whitney, I think, as you know, you've been at Point Robinson and, and they tend to pass very, very close to shore there. And the first time I saw an orca, it was J1. Um, he was still living and he was, you know, maybe 15 feet off the beach. It was a very close pass. And I can still feel and hear the sound of his breath always. Um, and uh and just his his that that experience of that interaction with them, where you really stepped back a little bit because um, the whales were so close and J1 was so close. So you know, from there, um, where where I was always an environmentalist, but if you care about orcas, you have to kind of really get in the game here, and you have to care about everything you know below them in the food chain, down to, as I'll say, sort of the smallest grains of sand that make the forage fish beaches, because of course the uh, forage fish that feed the salmon, which feed the orca. So um, I would say it was probably about 20 years ago now that I started actively working in in Puget Sound and Salish Sea um, habitat protection, and one of the uh, big uh, jumps into that, which you were also a part of, was the fight for Maury Island and the gravel mine there, because that was really, I think, one of the first times, it was shortly after orcas had been um, listed as endangered. And so it was really one of those first tests of how are we going to do things differently now trying to protect orcas? So I uh, jumped into that fight, which ended up being very successful. And then from there, we founded um, Sound Action to make sure that we were and keeping our boots on the ground to protect um, nearshore habitat. Right. So a lot of what you do is is this permit watchdog work. And now, you know, and of course, all of that is in the hopes of protecting our endangered southern resident killer whales. Um, and now you have launched this new project to install an underwater camera in the hopes yeah. of spotting whales. So how did the whole project come about? You know, we've been planning for some time and, and, you know, I'll step back. So I live on Vashon, but um, Sound Action works throughout all of the sort of Washington state portion of the Salish Sea. And we do that watchdog work permit by permit for every development permit. Um, And we had long been talking about putting in a hydrophone at Point Robinson to um, join into the Orca Sound and, and some of the hydrophones that are in place through the region to help um, track when the whales were down here, if it was night or, you know, just just sort of uh, uh, step into that. And we were, you know, with the pandemic, I think it really brought a a new emphasis on kind of remote interaction, right? Like we're all having to do right now. How do we um, still have that um, uh, ability to, it kind of like when I stood on the beach and had that close and really amazing experience with the whales. And so as we were talking about the hydrophone and just kind of doing some research, it just really was like a little bit of a light bulb of, hey, this is this doesn't happen much. There really aren't many underwater cameras worldwide, frankly, and none that we really know of in Puget Sound. And so we thought, let's do this. This is the this is the right time to do it. And hopefully will bring us um, 
whales into the living rooms of the world, we say. And even, you know, I think what's as exciting is even uh, if we're there are times where we're not catching whales, obviously they're not there all the time. And um, but we're as excited about this being the lens into the near shore as well, because it's it'll be 24 seven. And so it will allow people to, you know, remotely look in and see what's happening that day. Uh, are there forage fish coming in to start spawning? Um, it's at a point, so uh, a, a, a point in the in the sound where salmon tend to, um, adult salmon as they're migrating, tend to um, come close to those points as well. So there's a lot that we're really excited about there. Um, and it really was just born out of, um, you know, really having that notion of being creative with some new tools as we're in a pandemic and moving forward from there. Yeah, I've enjoyed watching some of the cameras that have, uh, they're on a live stream from yeah. British Columbia, right? Like, yeah. you can't get into Canada right now, but you can watch northern resident killer whales from the comfort of your own yeah. home. And, and go ahead. It, well, and I do, I mean, obviously giving a shout out to um, Orca Lab, who does have, they've had the camera at the um, rubbing beach for years. Um, and so, to our knowledge, that's the only other sort of underwater camera in the region Um and then there's, but yeah, it is fabulous where you can um, watch and, you know, get out of your living room, get out of your house when you, uh, when you can't otherwise do that so much. I've always sort of had the idea since the whales travel so close to shore at Point uh, Robinson that you know, it, when you're standing on shore and you're watching, it's like they have to be scraping bottom, right? Like, it's just amazing to see how close they come. Do you know, is there any evidence for the, for southern residents rubbing in that spot along the, the pebbles on the bottom? Or do you, you hope know, to sort of get an idea of what's happening there with this camera? Well, that's what the hope is. And and there's, you know, it's interesting, we had to send a uh, our diver down, um, one of the people who's helping us. And so it was also really fascinating having watched them there for years and how they come so close and to get that visual of there's a pretty steep, um, drop off very quickly there as well. And so it was really fascinating. Um, we actually did our vegetation survey with a camera as well, really trying to move into this visual world. So it will be really interesting to see um, what they're doing there. Um, sometimes we'll see them drop down as they're coming to the point and then they'll, you know, sort of pop up a hundred feet later. So that's going to be really part of the mystery of hopefully catching them of, are they rubbing? Are they diving? Are they fishing? Are they, you know, what are they doing as they pass? Um, and, uh, you know, just getting that, getting that snapshot into it is, is really going to be exciting. And of course, it's a little tricky. We don't know exactly, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit different than the rubbing beach where you know exactly where they go at rubbing beach. And so this is going to be a little bit of a kind of work in progress too, because we're going to put the camera where we're estimating we're going to get the best shots of them. We very specifically got an um, upgraded camera that has uh, the ability to do rotations. And um, so it's really a 360 and zoom so we can, maneuver it if we need to. Um, but that's going to be the fun thing, too, is trying to find where we where we catch them the best and what we see. So if folks so, are watching yeah. right now on the the YouTube channel, you are seeing pictures of the camera, um, which looks like a, a big eyeball, really. Um, can you share a little yeah. bit more about how the camera is set up, how you're positioning it. And you mentioned that there are divers working to install it. Yeah. Um, how deep is it going to be installed? Share the process of, of installing yeah. this thing. Yeah, it's been pretty fascinating and, um, and fun, I have to say, too, because it's really been a collaborative effort as well. Um, so we started working on this, oh, gosh, a long time ago. And it was really hard. We, we, we wanted to not necessarily talk about it until we knew we could really do it. So it was a, it was about the hardest secret to keep <laughs> for, you know, six or eight months. Um, and so, and I love the camera. I, I, um, it's given me such joy, even just looking at it. It's like a crystal ball, you know? <laughs> um, and so we started partnering right away with a, um, company called view into the blue. 
And they're known sort of around the world as being these folks who do this innovative camera work and they develop these specific cameras. And if you see on the globe of it, what I love too is there's actually kind of a windshield wiper on it because most marine waters have algae that will grow. And so it's a self-cleaning camera too. What? Um, and so we started working with them and they've been phenomenal, just jumping right in and, you know, um, helping us and, and they're kind of all along the way there. And um, yeah, and then we, you know, we had to get permits for this and we had to figure out where we were going to put it. So we started, um, we've had the great support of a, of a really wonderful diver, James Hyde, who, um, you know, was ready to get in the water and help us um, figure some of that out and the placement of it. We're going to be putting the camera in, the depth is a give or take about a minus 25. And, and we wanted to do that so that it was deep enough that... Um, we had a little bit of buffer between like, if it rains really hard, hydrophones can pick up a lot of excess noise. And so we wanted to try to get that sweet spot where, um, where we, again, where we think the whales are going to be most likely to be caught. And we can obviously move that around a little bit if we need to. Um, and we have to do, you know, it's, it will be live 24 seven. So they'll, the internet access there is a little interesting. We're actually doing a relay internet from across the water. Um, SR3 is partnering with us where we're using a, a radio relay system to pick up the, from their internet to shoot it over to Point Robinson because we could not get internet access uh, at the point where we needed it. So there's all these really interesting and innovative things that are happening as well that gratefully we live in this technology world where it's possible. Um, and so, yeah, so the camera will be in, it'll be live 24 seven right now. We're, we're looking to the YouTube channel um, and that'll be integrated into our website. And then the hydrophone ultimately that's on the same platform will be, uh, we'll, we're working with Orca Sound on that. So the hydrophone will also have a, a separate standalone where it's feeding into the Orca Sound system, uh, the Sailor Sea network. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. So it's audio and video all in yep. one unit. Yep. Yeah. Actually, it, it, the can the hydrophone is a slightly separate part of it, but it all goes, it's all um, built into sort of the same, the cables that come out of it. And so um, it is pretty fascinating too, because the area there is, um, th this is a pretty high energy beach. And so different than some of the underwater cameras that are in place around the world that might be in like the Caymans or somewhere where it's this lovely kind of slack water. So that was a bit of a challenge too, where, um, and, and we'll be, a, you know, we're hoping this works the way we think it will. Um, but it, it's set to be on just a, a cement uh, footing, right? But the, um, we learned that both the camera itself has some buoyancy because of that globe and because of the currents there, uh, we had to actually build the footing with lead weights in it and cement. So the footing itself is hundreds of pounds to make sure that it doesn't move with those currents or shifting sands too far. Um, so there's just been, and, and really it's been exciting the whole time, a little frustrating too, just because we are, have been so excited to get this in. And um, and we had some glitches with, uh, we had to do some um, uh, some slight shifts to the camera um, but it, yeah, it's been really a, a pretty remarkable experience. Um, just, you know, watching this come to fruition and come to life and, um, and get closer and closer to, uh, to going in the water, which should be very, very soon. <laughs> what was it like yourself having to go through the permitting process you spend so much time yeah. watching other permitting processes for docks or bulkheads or buoys and now here you are installing a cement you know footing for this camera yeah. in the near shore habitat what was it like to finally be on the other side of this it it was it was fascinating and i'm glad that we had the experience to um but yeah, I, you know, we had to laugh a little bit like, yeah, we're the permit watchdog groups that we fight permits in court and watchdog every single one of them at the state level, the HPA permits. And then and so, you know, even for this small footprint of a project, um, you have to get every permit. And of course, we weren't going to try to talk anybody out of that. So we had to get a federal permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. 
uh, a local um, exemption permit from King County. We had to get a youth authorization from the Department of Natural Resources, um, who, by the way, they were fabulous. I think they're as excited as we are about this project because it's also in a marine aquatic reserve. Um, and then we had to get a permit from uh, DFW, which is the agency that we watchdog those HPA permits. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it cracked me up many days because we're running through those application processes. And, of course, we knew, uh, I think, going into it, some of the things that we would need, the vegetation survey. We were, you know, we knew whether it was a forage fish spawning beach. Um, so we, we took sort of the lightest touch possible, too, going into it. But it was it was great. We um, had a pretty good experience, though, you know, with DFW, um, sort of the stranger than fiction. We actually I, I sort of joke we had to appeal our own permit because they <laughs> issued our HPA incorrectly. And we uh, we had to. Uh, so in a normal situation, if it were somebody else that we were reviewing the permit, we would have reached out to DFW to say we're fight. We have to file an appeal. You have the wrong conditions on this permit or um, the wrong timing things or, or something that was um, not in compliance with the hydraulic code and our permit, um, and I'm sure they're a little mortified about that, but our permit was issued incorrectly. So we had to reach out to them and say, um, you actually, could you please rescind our permit because you, uh, because you issued it in violation of the code. <laughs> and, um, and in that case they had, it was because we, you have to have a, uh, it's called SEPA compliance. You have to show a letter that you've met SEPA compliance, which happens at the local jurisdiction. And we didn't have that yet. So um, so they rescinded the permit at our request. And then a couple weeks later, as we got everything that we were supposed to have, we let them know and they reissued it. But um, yeah, I did not see that one coming. We, I, was, I was actually a bit more concerned that DFW would potentially not be as... Uh, cooperative as some of the other agencies. Um, and so it was a simple mistake on their part, but it was it was a little uh, amusing. And I guess reiterates why it's really important to have watchdog groups, because if that had been somebody else, they wouldn't have, they would have gone ahead and been doing their project out of compliance with the code. Right. And how does the camera fit in with the larger work that Sound Action is doing? You know, you mentioned earlier some interesting things that I hadn't really thought about, which is just viewing what else is going on underwater when the whales aren't there. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I think so. So we are, you know, really an action oriented um, watchdog organization. And we do that work to protect the habitat by permit by permit. And if the smallest thing is wrong with it, we reach out and get that corrected. And sometimes we have to go into the larger courtrooms to do that. We, you know, have had federal cases recently where um, the Army Corps of Engineers and federal agencies will now be requiring federal permits for shoreline bulkheads, which prior to that, they had given them this sort of pass. Same thing at the state level. And so, um, so you know, I think that this is a natural intersection with the work that we do of habitat protection and a way to have that as a bit of an add on, because our work is really about sort of the larger ecosystem. And, and yes, orcas are a part of our passion, but so are salmon. And I get just as excited about herring. Um, I'm that much of a of a nearshore geek. So I think it's a way to capture kind of what that picture really looks like. Um, and you know, looking at the vegetation that's there. And, and um, you know, this is a, it's an accretion shore form, which is the uh, process that, um, you know, where feeder bluffs dump some of their sediment and then the way that it moves there. And so there's even that lens of what's happening with the sediment deposits on certain beaches and how might that be changing in different events and with climate change and, and different things. So I think for us, again, it was just this sort of natural add on to um, helping to inform to some degree the, the science. Um, so we envision this being used by, by, you know, by researchers, by biologists, by whoever, you know, um, can, vision, can envision this as a tool for themselves, as well as the sort of simple pleasure of getting to uh, just enjoy watching fish, whales, underwater view. 
Um, so really that whole capture of that, um, of that connection to the near shore. That's so cool. You know, a lot of these innovative projects, you, you never know what's going to happen. You never know yeah. what you're going to see. So I'm looking forward to, you know, the weird and bizarre things to happen. You know, a sea star climbs on the camera yeah. or, you know, who knows? Yeah. We're going to be surprised no matter what. I think so. And, you know, we're part of the reason, too, I think that this is a little bit delayed is we were also making sure that we have the sort of infrastructure there for it, for, you know, that, that they're, that it's being recorded, that, um, we're able to have all those setups to capture odd things. And because it's going to, you know, it's 24 seven live on a channel, like I'm already planning, I'm not a big TV person and I'm going to go buy some of those smart web TVs because I just want to have them up in my house, <laughs> right. That, that it becomes, and that's the beauty of technology, right? You can do that. Like instead of a picture frame with a photo, it's an actual live frame of underwater Salish Sea. And who knows what's going to be happening. There's usually a lot of harbor seals there and sea lions. And I'm pretty sure we're going to, you know, get some curious um, explorations of the camera as well. Oh, that's so cool. I, I cannot wait. For everyone yeah. out there who is just as excited as we are, can you share a little bit about when you hope to have the project launched and how they can help support it? Sure. So, you know, the when we have it launched, you know, that was our hope was that was in December. Um, but again, we had to do a little bit of work. There was some um, noise that we discovered coming from the camera. Uh, and so uh, we had to do some some fixes on that. Um, so I, I want to like knock on all the wood around me. I'm envisioning that we I mean, we are very close to getting it in the water um, and whether that's two weeks um, I think we're sort of in that time frame right now, barring any, um, you know, I I any sort of setbacks on on that. Um, but we're 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 getting pretty darn close. We have the stuff ready to go in, and so it's just a matter of you know weather and um, getting the internet hookup uh, relay in place and all of that. And you know, as far as for helping, I mean, this was this as you can imagine, this was this is not cheap. Um, but we felt like it was really important and we wanted to sort of take that bold step. So View Into the Blue has been very um, generous with allowing us a time period to raise the funds for the camera. So we're still very much in the fundraising mode for that. Um, and, you know, people can certainly help by making a donation. You can go to soundaction.org, click the donate page um, and, you know, help us support this this um, really great project that we think is going to be a little bit of a game changer and, and truly a first step because, you know, we don't necessarily envision stopping here. If this works the way we think it will, it, it opens up a whole new tool in um, how we can look at some near shore, uh, near shore work and cameras going in potentially in other places, whether it's for whales or, um, monitoring vegetation growth, different things like that. Wow, the potential is just limitless. Yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. It's um, my pleasure. Yes, if you um, want to learn more, go to soundaction.org. And as always, um, if you enjoyed this podcast, please go up to whalescout.org where we have a full ar archive of all of our episodes. You can download these on the go by subscribing on iTunes. And now we are on YouTube with video to get the full experience. Just go up to Whale Scout on uh, YouTube and you can find us there. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for listening today.